Today in Getting Real with the Housewives, Meredith Marks talks to Jen Shaw's shocking arrest. Speculated that it was something illegal. No, I mean, did I think it was possible? Sure, I mean, anything's possible. But um, I just, things didn't add up for me and that was problematic. Plus, we get our first look at the new season of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Then we're breaking down everything you need to know about this week's Beverly Hills. We've got that plus so much more on today's Getting Real with the Housewives. Hey guys, Christina Garibaldi here with Us Weekly executive producer, Mandy DeCamp. Mandy, how are you? I'm doing great. I just watched Beverly Hills and I am ready to break this down. I'm so excited. We had so much to get to, but first we have to kick it off with what the ladies have been up to this week in the news and they've been pretty busy. Okay, so first up, Nene Leakes was supported by some of her Real Housewives of Atlanta co-stars this week as she said goodbye to her husband, Greg, after he lost his battle with colon cancer. Uh, She hosted a celebration of life at the Lanethia Lounge in Atlanta on Monday, September 6th, and was joined by Phaedra Parks, Marlo Hampton, Portia Williams, Eva Marcel, and Lisa Wu. So, so nice. And I like that she did a celebration of life. I think that's more uplifting than than calling it a funeral. Definitely. And I know in some of the the social media posts that were were shared, you know, she was seen smiling and kind of not enjoying herself by any means, but, you know, at least like it was more of a celebration than a somber event. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I guess she has known that this was coming. So it's it was nice to, for, to have that support of her co-stars for yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, something that make, is making Lisa Rinna smile this week is um, her daughter Amelia Hanlon is back on the market. Instagram user Queens of Bravo reposted Us Weekly's article about Amelia and Scott Disick's breakup, and Lisa commented with a smiley face. Now she has made it no secret <laughs> that she's not a fan of this relationship, so we guess that she is doing a very happy dance this week. Yes, yes. No, I love that she did not hide it, and I'm wondering if that had anything to do with the you know that was only a few weeks ago on the show when she started kind of being open about not being a bit fan of this relationship and Mm -hmm. the age difference and all of that so I'm wondering if that you know maybe maybe sparked a little something and possibly Scott's comments on you know to Eunice which is a whole other story (laughs) a whole other story back on the market unfortunately for Elisa I don't think Harry Styles is available even though she's really hoping for that but I'm sure that somebody will uh swoop her up (laughs) yes in no time at all (laughs) all right so former OG of the OC Vicky Gunvalson is in some hot water um when it comes to her son-in-law Ryan Culberson um she revealed the sex of He and his wife, Brianna, her daughter, uh, she revealed the sex of their fourth child. And uh, take a look at this. You ever get really good news and then find out your mother-in-law ruins it? Well, it happened to me today. Oh, yeah, we're having a girl. So Vicky posted a sneak peek of the gender reveal, but quickly took it down. Um, However, some Bravo fan sites were quick to capture the moment. Um, I mean, how mad would you be if your mother-in-law revealed the sex? Also, not only your mother-in-law, but a mother-in-law that has... A lot of followers. Yeah, I would be pretty pissed as well. (laughs) I don't think it would be an awkward uh, get together the next time we saw we saw each other. No, no. I mean, at least it wasn't their first kid. It's their fourth. Right. So, you know, not that big of a deal. But but I don't know. It's pretty I think it's pretty funny. I think it's pretty funny, (laughs) too. And totally in Vicky fashion. Very Vicky. (laughs) So let's break down the latest Real Housewives episodes in our Real Housewives Rewind, kicking it off with Beverly Hills. And this was kind of a continuation of last week's episode we picked it up at Kathy Hilton's dinner party and Sutton and Erica are going at it again so what do you think do you think Sutton should have stayed and continued the discussion or was she in the right to get up and walk away I think she was in the right to get up and walk away I thought Erica was a little bit too harsh on her um I also felt like they left Sutton out you know it to the wolves <laughs> like I, I think you know Dorit has said stuff about Erica Garcelle I mean Garcelle if anyone is coming to Sutton's defense which mm-hmm. I appreciate um and like Garcelle said I think it's very much this season Garcelle and Sutton versus the rest of them yeah. and, a, and a little bit of Crystal as well who where has she been? Right. But <laughs> <laughs> um but I you know she wasn't 
I, I would have totally, I think I would have gotten up too. If someone threatened me, made a promise that they were going to come after me. I think I would have gotten up as well. How I about you? Totally agree with you. I, I, well, first of all, I probably would have been in tears at that dinner table if Erica talked to me like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. at least like Sutton was able to like kind of hold it together and not completely break down in front of her. But yeah, that was a threat more than a promise. I mean, the, you're yeah. when you're telling somebody you're talking about me, you're going to get sued and uh, you know, you're talking about somebody else's health and things like that. Like, no, that was a threat. And, um, you know, I, I feel like Erica, Erica is taking a lot of her issues out on Sutton because like you said, all of the other girls have been asking these questions. Kyle has, Dorit has, Garcelle yeah. has, but, you know, Sutton is the only one that's kind of being like, all right, I'm going to say it to her and not behind her back. And yeah. I don't know. I didn't really agree with Kyle either kind of going after Sutton when they were in that uh, store together. Cause I feel mm-hmm. like Sutton did say what she promised to say to her. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think Kyle is taking the route of like, I'm going to handle Erica with kid gloves. Yes. And because I'm, I think they are scared of her. I think some of them definitely are be. scared of Erica. Scared me. Yeah, it's just a little scary. <laughs> I wouldn't want her on my bad side either. No. But, but I appreciate that Sutton is saying it like it is, or at least how she thinks it is. And yeah, I don't know. I think Kyle, Kyle, Kyle's taking a back seat and I'm not a fan of it. No. And Erica, I don't know if you saw last night, she posted like a meme of, um, from the wizard of Oz saying like, if somebody only had a brain, they wouldn't be like asking yeah. these questions or something along those lines. So clearly she's still like heated up about this. Oh, and yeah. I can't yeah, imagine. Yeah. I mean, I mean, even she said in the, in the episode that she's not going to be friends with Sutton anymore. So I wonder if as the season kind of goes on, I mean, we're probably almost done with this season if they, you know, make amends or if not, but something tells me absolutely not. (laughs) Yeah. Something tells me no. (laughs) No. Do you think that one of them should apologize? I no, honestly, I think, I think there's too much damage done on both sides and I don't see any point to an apology. I mean, if they want to, you know, feel better about themselves and apologize, sure, go for it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's going to help any friendship happen. I think it'll be just, you know, protocol, but (laughs) I don't think it's going to mend any damage that's been done. So I think they both just need to move on. Yeah, totally. Oh my God. I cannot wait for this reunion. Oh, it's going to be be crazy (laughs) but yeah no I mean but you know Erica is in a lot of still legal hot water I mean we had a report today that you know um, an investigator is saying that she needs to pay back 25 million or she should voluntarily pay back 25 million dollars to these uh, to the victims Um, she's still saying that this is kind of like a bogus lawsuit Um, so you know she says that she's still in the dark about everything that she never knew so you know this is really playing out in real time Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, did they already shoot the reunion? Do we know? I don't think so. I don't yeah. know. I don't yeah. know, but oh my God, I cannot wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm getting some popcorn, some wine. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so let's talk about those first few minutes of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City that Bravo released this week. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be a good one. <laughs> Can you believe that they caught Jen Shaw's arrest on camera? No, I mean, yeah. absolutely. Like, so For those of everybody that hasn't seen it, they were about to go on their way to an event. Uh, They're all loading into this party bus. And then Jen gets a call from somebody being like, you should probably leave. The FBI is coming to arrest you. So she leaves a few minutes later. All these helicopters come. The the police are there. They're wondering where she is. And, you know, a few minutes later, you know, she's eventually arrested. But this is insane. I mean, I feel like now, like all these housewives have to get into legal trouble to make these seasons really good. <laughs> like if there's not an arrest or a lawsuit i'm not interested <laughs> no like they've really so set the bar like i hate to say it but yeah it's such good television and this is not scripted this is real reality tv you know they don't hire helicopters this is real this is, this, I mean, yeah this is real like she is in yeah. a lot of trouble like i yeah. would not like if i had to pick between jen shaw and erica jane i'd be erica jane right now <laughs> yeah actually same (laughs) like so but like it's crazy that she continued to film like we talked about this with um with um, Meredith Marks a little bit uh, as Mm -hmm. well that she's like shocked that she continued to film this season when you're in so much legal trouble that you just like continue to open up your life about this yeah well I think it's a little bit what I said about Erica Jane last week which you know I'm just speculating but I feel like they're holding on to this show because you feel like the rest of your life is falling apart and this is all that you have left and you know that the show wants you on it because 
you're the best part of it right now. Mm -hmm. So I think it's that kind of holding on to that. Cause if you quit the show and you're just home or, you know, in jail or whatever, <laughs> stewing in your own thoughts, like that's yeah. even worse, I think. So that's really? you're just holding on to this like hope. <laughs> no, that you're, you're, you're so right. And this is how they're going to be making their money now because yeah. they can't do illegal activities anymore. Yeah. So, but yeah. yeah, no, it's crazy that they call this. I'm so excited for this, uh, for this season. Yeah. The, the first episode premieres, uh, this Sunday. So we'll we're going to be having all of yeah. that next week. So it's definitely going to be a good season. All right. So speaking of Jen Shaw, we got to get to our chat with Meredith Marks. He, like you said, revealed why she thought it was surprising that Jen kept filming. So take a look. Obviously, we don't know. Obviously, she's going through her whole legal battle and things like that. But did you ever have any idea that maybe something shady was going on behind closed doors with Jen? So every single one of the ladies, including me, with the exception of, I believe, Jenny, mm -hmm. I don't because this was all last season was DM'd information. So um, knowing that and seeing how I, I could never understand what she did after all the questions that were asked, not just by me, but by the general public and, you know, not understanding what any of these marketing companies were marketing or whatever. Yeah, I, I, I had a lot, my eyebrows were raised. I didn't understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. Did you ever you talk to her? Speculated that it was something illegal? No. I mean, did I think it was possible? Sure. I mean, anything's possible. But um, I just, things didn't add up for me. And that was problematic. Yeah. I mean, what were the, how did this kind of change the dynamic in the group? Did a lot of people, because it almost seems like Lisa maybe cut her off after the arrest or didn't take her phone calls and things like that. Were, were the ladies there for her or did you kind of all take a step back? From her you know I can't really speak for anybody else I do think that at least one person was fully there mm -hmm. um, I think there was a lot of playing both sides um, I will have to see how it all unfolds along with you because yeah. it felt like a lot of people were very much trying to play both sides, trying to sort of like, they didn't really want to align with Jen, but they're also, I don't know, intimidated by her perhaps. I, I don't really know. Right. I, can't, I can't speak for anyone but myself and what I saw, which made me feel like there was a lot of playing both sides. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. interesting. Right. You know, it's interesting because, you know, we're seeing some legal drama going on in Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, too. And a lot of the women, you know, are concerned about how not their involvement because they're not involved, but like how their reputation looks, you know, being associated with somebody like that. Did you ever worry about how your reputation would look being associated with Jen after this? I mean, of course, that's something that crosses your mind. Is it my primary concern? No. Like, I mean... Look, I, I don't, innocent till proven guilty at the end of the day. And so I, I can't, my friendship with Jen is a different standard. I don't, I'm not held to legal standards, mm -hmm. but in terms of a crime, it is innocent till proven guilty. And, you know, the court of friendship's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised that she can, continued with the show after all of this? Yes. Yeah. Very surprised. Yeah. Would you have? <laughs> no. And I can't fathom any attorney advising that she should have, which is why I was so surprised. Yeah. I, I can understand why she might want to, because she might want to, you know, get her story out there or I don't know, her opinions out there or profess her innocence or whatever it may be. She may want to have a voice. So I can understand why she may want to. I just can't get my head around any lawyer under the sun ever advising a, a, a client in the same circumstances. Yeah, I think like the the drama between Meredith and Jen gets really intense this season because Jen, like if you see the trailer and if you watch the first episode, uh, Jen pretty much um, accuses Meredith of being the one to tipping off the feds of where she was. So this gets really, really interesting. Meredith yeah. pretty much said that that's not the case because, you know, these uh, investigations are going on for months and months and months. But yeah. I don't know. This, it gets really like, I think they're going to find you, Jen. <laughs> 
<laughs> Whether or not Meredith said something. Yeah. Right. You have cameras following you all the time. All the time. And like Salt Lake City is not that big unless you're like fleeing the state or the country. They're going to find you. And I also thought it was interesting that Meredith told you that she has to watch back the season to see how it all plays out because people were playing both sides so much. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see that, especially coming off of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and kind of seeing that play out and who's taking whose side. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be so good. So my social spotlight goes to Amelia Gray Hamlin after her breakup with Scott Disick. She is flaunting her body and looking amazing. Um, she posted a ton of videos from the Bronx and Banco fashion show this week. And I mean, take a look at these clips. She just looks incredible. And I think that's the best way to get over a breakup is to look Amazing. <laughs> Seriously. Talk about the sweetest revenge. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. Sorry, Scott. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. You're really poor Scott. Poor, poor Scott. Scott. I don't know. I, know, I, know. <laughs> I like, don't know if I feel bad for Scott or like, you know, I feel like he had so many, I know this is a housewife show and now we're talking Kardashians, but I feel like he had so many chances to try to get back with Courtney and he just couldn't figure it out. I know. I know. I always wanted them to be back together, but I, I think that ship has really sailed now. I, I do. I know. Yeah. She is full on with Travis Barker and I wouldn't be surprised if they get married I really am oh God. but yeah. let's continue the talk on Jen Shaw because I gotta yes. get into our social spotlight of the week where we discuss which housewife uh, caught our attention on social media and it seems like Jen is just like completely toned up about what's going on <laughs> she is just like reposting everything on Instagram of people talking about um, her tagline which is like uh, something about like uh, I'm if I'm guilty then I'm Shaw amazing or something yeah. <laughs> like, like, something like it's that just crazy to me that she's just like completely embracing. kind of ignore embracing it and being like yes I am a like I ruined people's lives allegedly um so I don't know and then she like posted something about on Labor Day saying like um posted me out working on Labor Day that people should be working really hard and it's like oh my god girl like what's yeah. going through your mind right now <laughs> yeah yeah she's embracing it I guess we could say um good for her yeah. you know I mean <laughs> yes. what whatever <laughs> whatever know. whatever floats your boat all right well that's it for this week's episode of getting real with the housewives Mandy always a pleasure talking housewives with you yes always thanks Christina of course and make sure to keep commenting keep subscribing and make sure to check, it, check out Getting Real with the Housewives every Thursday on Us Weekly's YouTube channel. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.